Let's talk about hypnosis. The human eye, all of our senses, see things which is filtered into the brain. The brain then takes this data and constructs maps or ideas of how the world is around it. Since we cannot directly perceive all the different energy fields around us, we are stuck with what our perceptions give us, and through time our perceptions can mislead us and also t take us to different places of misunderstanding. Hypnosis is a type of form where when one can put attention onto something so simple, the mind can open itself up to different suggestions, suggestibility. We're going to learn a little bit about what hypnosis is, but most people are actually hypnotized to different reflexes. So we're going to teach you ideas about dehypnosis as well. Here we have a little course on electrohypnosis, how to use your ski o or slash or indigo to be able to do electrohypnosis. And the hypnosis really is giving suggestions. We don't have to have trance in order to get a hypnotic suggestion. The ideas of, hit, of history go back and hypnosis is used for desensitization of fears and paranoia, for uh, habits such as smoking, etc. There is an ancient idea of fear hypnosis as well. Dracula provides the best example of this fear hypnosis. All these will I give you. If you will obey me. What did he want you to do? That which has already been done. <laughs> Come here. In a calm place with no distractions, the fear would focus the person's attention onto the hypnotist, who then could implant suggestions Come here. Everybody is somewhat susceptible. Certain people are very, very susceptible. And some people can resist. But a hypnotic suggestion always has some effect on the person. To break people free from the effects of peer pressure, the different forces of conformity in our society, we have to get them free of their bad habits and get them to be able to dehypnotize. Your will is strong and healthy. Surgery is using hypnosis, and it's happening more and more throughout the world. Let's look at a report from Euronews. It is also to create tranquility for the medical team. One of the fundamentals is to avoid sudden noises, which would bring the patient out of her hypnotic state. Secondly, the surgeon and his helpers, even the anesthetist, must control their emotions the whole time. Keeping calm is very important, because if the surgeon is agitated, the patient feels it. In this operating theater, the anesthetist is also a hypnotist. We are in the St. Luc University Hospital in Brussels. Belgium is in the forefront of hypnotism for surgery, more so than, for instance, France, Switzerland, or the US. St. Luc's has been using it for seven years. Studies show that surgery under hypnosis compared to general anesthetic improves a lot of things. Notably, there's comfort after an operation. With anesthetic, people don't sleep well, their consciousness is affected, but with hypnosis, they immediately feel more normal. It improves scar healing. After surgery, pain is reduced, and so it reduces the use of painkillers. En post -opératoire. Un petit peu la For nuque operations aussi, where local anesthetic okay. is sufficient physically but falls short of guaranteed comfort, hypnosis is proving a valuable alternative to full anesthetic. And the ideas go way back when, and the Russians did investigation on it, and the American medical and the military did research in order to understand hypnosis more fully. And we really do not understand completely hypnosis. Hypnosis is a word 
comes from the Greek for sleep. But it really isn't just sleep. It's really a little bit more than that. It's a state of suggestibility. And many have studied this throughout the years, and a lot of this has been even top secret. Now, we've been able to reveal many different things to help you be able to get to these ideas. And we've been able to find out there are certain vibrations that can be utilized to help to get somebody into a hypnotic state. In a hypnotic state, what we are doing is we're going to be shifting the type of consciousness from a verbal awakening beta consciousness to a deeper stage of consciousness, a theta and alpha, to get the brain into a different state of mind, different state of vibration, and we utilize that inside the NLP to be able to get an electrical stimulation through the system, be it Skio, Eduktor, or even with you Indigo. And of course, the Eduktor does all of this better. But to be able to utilize this with headphones so we get the auditory, and we get the stimulation through the harness, and we're able to get the Eduktor to then send out these different vibrations, and the Eduktor has a much greater range. These vibrations will then be able to go into the brain, switch it into a different area of suggestibility, more suggestibility. Then we use the visualization of the screen to be able to give an image from the extended desktop to be able to play a nice, big, robust image. And then by using the big, we can go in there and see that the system is working. And inside the, the big is where we can choose these images. We can choose many different types of three-dimensional images to play on, a, on an extended desktop like we see now. So the patient can be watching, listening, getting vibrations, and the cybermagnetic chair can also be in, involved. We also have the new goggles, which can also send a type of vibration into the brain to help to sedate it. So this combination of magnetic, visual, photonic, electrical, all these stimulations come in to help guide the brain into a different system to be able to relax the mind, taking it into a different state of consciousness to be able to receive our suggestions more deeply. What I'm going to play for you now is show you one of the new basic systems. Because in this vibration, that we're going to see now inside this system there is a deep deep sonic vibration of a very low quality to help guide you into a, a state of hypnosis and also there is a very high electrical vibration that is being made by the machine and also in the sound that will come on and off at different times this 15,000 Hertz auditory combined with the low quality will help to guide the mind into a deeper quality of suggestion when you get them into this suggestion you might use other type of music you might use other type of things or you might just do talking and what we're going to try to do is get the person to breathe a little slower take in the, in the air follow some of our hypnotic suggestions and i have many of them and then help the person to get into a deeper state of consciousness a state of relaxation and then we want to supply dehypnosis suggestions to help to dehypnotize where they are already caught in a suggestion they are already caught in a suggestion perhaps that they need chocolate cake and if they hear the word chocolate cake the stimulus then they want some that's a hypnotic suggestion they're already caught in we want to set them free dehypnotize them we want to be able to help them to relax. We might want to give them a different suggestion that the, the carrots, the celery, natural, good, fresh and raw vegetables, that those are helpful and that they have the same allure as the chocolate cake. We might want to dehypnotize the idea that when you're under stress, etc., that you need a cigarette. That's a suggestion. We might want to dehypnotize that or we might want to give them another suggestion. A type of suggestion that the cigarette tastes like dog shit or that type. That's called a negative suggestion. 
We want to use our positive and our negative suggestions. So now that we've utilized this and gotten the person into a deep quality of, of suggestibility, whether they slip into a trance is not so important. It is important that we provide a suggestion for them. It is important that we get them into a state of suggestibility and then give them a new suggestion. Always make sure that you're dehypnotizing the bad suggestions and that you are giving good suggestions and then helping them to relax and helping them to set back the fears. Also, you must always act ethically as a therapist, as a helper, and you're working with people. Do not abuse this. You must respect the ethics of the situation of somebody coming to you. As you put all of this together, you'll be able to make yourself into a wonderful electrohypnotist and be able to help people. And of course, recognize that other people will think of you as a, as a magician or think of you as a witch or something. And that's not what you're doing. But please, don't abuse your power. Work with the patient and recognize that healing comes from within them and help to open the doors to their own heart and their own mind for healing. This is Desiree DuVernay. As you study our course on electrohypnosis, you'll see by reading the books and watching all the different videos, you'll be able to see and broaden your mind and learn more about this incredible art and how we can really help people, help people to change their behavior, increase their health, increase their focus, enhance their sports performance, enhance their school performance. I welcome you now to the wonderful world of electrohypnosis.